and welcome to the fourth session of the QGIS walkthrough series. This session is on working with layer properties. Firstly, let's open some data. To open the layer properties, simply double click the layer in the legend panel or right click it and select properties. The layer properties dialog allows you to edit the style and transparency, access the metadata and edit general options for the layer. For vector layers, you can also add labels and view attribute headings through layer properties. The first tab is for the styles where you can edit the layer symbology in the next screencast session, I'll be explaining how to use Symbology, but for now, I'll load some nice Symbology files that have been already created. I can do this by using the Load Style button in the Layer Properties. You can add labels by simply clicking display labels and selecting the field that you wish to label by. You can also specify the font size and buffers. Please watch the next screencast session for a much neater labeling tool. The Fields tab allows you to see the current attributes or field headings and their data type. There are functions in this tab that will help you when editing the layer. We'll return to this on the screencast about attributes. Under the General tab, you can edit the display name. You can also create spatial indices that will improve the speed when doing vector queries. The current CRS assigned for this layer is displayed over here. You can reassign this by clicking Specify CRS. Using scale dependent rendering, will only show the layer for the scales that you choose. For example, my map looks a bit cluttered at the moment, and even when I zoom out, it looks more cluttered. I can use scale-dependent rendering to adjust this. Now, those layers will only display as I zoom in. Under the Layer Properties General tab, you can also specify if you only wish to show a subset of the data. To specify this, you need to use a query border. I'll talk about vector queries in the session later about attributes. The metadata tab indicates more information about the layer, like the type of vector file, 
the source of the data, the number of features, the extents, and the coordinate reference system. The Actions tab allows you to add actions to your layer based on the attribute for a feature. You are required to load a script that will specify the action. An example of an action could be displaying a photo when you click the feature. The Overlay tab allows you to add pie charts or bar graphs to your features in the layer based on their attributes. Let's move on to the raster layer properties. The raster layer properties are similar to the vector layer properties. The style tab in this case refers to the bands, color map, and contrast stretch applied. We can look at some basic color maps. Let's move the raster to the top of our list. Make sure the contrast stretch is stretched to min-max. The raster is currently shown in grayscale. I could apply a different color map, such as pseudo-color, or free counts. Applying the color map option will require me to edit something under the color map tab. Specify the number of entries and click classify. Transparency can also be edited. Let's go back to the grayscale option. If I switch off my other layers and only display my DEM, I'll see that my DEM has a black color around the sides. This can be removed in the Transparency tab. Simply select this button. And click Apply. This removes the black color around my data. Under the General tab, you can again see the display name, the layer source, the number of, of rows and columns for the raster, the no data value, scale dependent rendering, and your coordinate reference system. In the metadata tab, you get the file type, the data type and the pixel size as well as other information. There is an option to build pyramid layers. This will increase the speed of raster rendering when zooming. You can set the resolution of the pyramid layers, the resampling method and if you wish to make them internal or external to the original file. Lastly, we have the Histogram tab. The histogram shows the distribution of your data. 
We can also export this as an image. And that concludes the introduction to the layer properties dialogues. The next screencast will be looking at symbology and labeling of vector layers.